Definitely a couple of questions coming up. Um, I let, let me jump into this question about strategy before we jump into a couple of the questions that have been popping up uh, in terms of authority. Um, this is the chicken or egg conversation. Um, recognition and invitation. So how does one get recognized to be invited because once those invitations come the recognition i think can be a little bit easier to tap into mm -hmm. uh now that's just me on the outside looking in kind of saying to that but how does one how does a projector get to the point or the place where uh, they have the potential of being recognized for the correct invitations I, that might be a bit of a loaded question. So I know, a couple, okay, so Tammy, I'll have you jump in first. So you, you guys were also always talking about being recognized, being invited. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have my own theories, but I would rather projectors speak to that directly than, you know, man, Jen out here. <laughs> All right, Tammy, you jump in first. Okay, so right now we live, we still live in duality. We still require biofeedback. We still require um, that that feedback, right, in order for us to to know ourselves. Um, but like I said, it has to come from yourself first in order to get recognized. Then we get that biofeedback of somebody recognizing us, which amplifies our own recognition. That amplifies the invitations, right? I believe that, you know, I, my defined will, I believe in self empowerment and empowering yourself first in order to amplify it out of your aura um, to, to, to dance in the, and my line, you know, line too, but, but the biofeedback of our environment. So we create our environment, but it, it really is a biofeedback. So it's the more that we're seen and heard, the more that we recognize ourselves because projectors, as we've been told, do not see yourselves. We're, we're unaware of how magical we are until we're aware. And then it just lights us up. And sometimes it can take a long time for you to be aware of how magical you are. But when you do tap in to your own awareness, your own source of divine spark that you are, that we all are, the more other people are gonna recognize it. So that's my take on it. Awesome. Gloria? Um, do you want to repeat the question? I will. <laughs> um, I, yeah, so I was really just kind of talking about the chicken and egg scenario of recognition invitation. So when somebody has, I guess, regularly been recognized for something specific, right, for their wisdom, then the invitations might come a little bit more easily. Mm -hmm. However, how does one get in a position where they're recognized in the first place? to start oh, inviting the proper invitation. What I said uh, just a, a little bit ago, it has mm -hmm. to do with um, developing yourself, developing yourself as an authority in something. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what system or systems are you studying? What are you becoming knowledgeable in such that you actually have real live vital working information that makes a difference for other people because you have something that they need. You have direction, you have guidance, you have information, et cetera. So the more you become an authority in the areas in which you love, you desire, you're designed to do, th that becomes more evident because you join groups, you participate in communities, you show up at conferences online or in person, and people see you and they get to know you. You have to be visible. You can't be hiding. You can't be sitting on the couch waiting for the knock on the door. That might happen, you know, maybe once in a million times. But here's the thing. Projectors are here to be in relationship with other people. You cannot be in relationship if you're hiding. So go out there, be seen, be visible. Then you'll get recognized. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And just as you were um, speaking, Gloria, uh, 
uh, Daniela, I hope I got your name right. Daniela Strauss said, uh, can you please explain detail example wait for invitation? Um, I mean, I keep hearing that for two years and I can, uh, I still can't comprehend exactly. So yes, we are definitely talking about this. So Daniela, if you haven't been listening from the beginning, I would encourage you to listen again. Um, uh, but um, Brigitte, actually, if you can respond to this um, and uh, answer Daniela's query here, if I'm running my business, do I have to wait to post something, talk about something, invite to my program? Do I need to be invited every single time I want to do something? Uh, no. Brigitte, you, you, you're in business and you use human design in your business. So yes. I would say no, because over time I have really learned to not be so rigid with the, um, the strategy, right? How do we get invited? We have to be out there. We have to be seen. We have to be with people. We have to talk to them. We have to um, engage with them. And somewhere in that, they're going to get curious about us too. If we're curious about them and curious about the world and curious about everything out there, right? And have fun with it. Don't stress ourselves out. Like I'm out here to look for, I'm waiting for, but I'm going to sit right here until somebody, that's not going to work. We have to get out there and do what we do, which we are people persons, right? We are, we love people. We're really interested in them. That's where the invitations are going to come from. I, I had a client this week who goes to coffee shops because she kind of needs that fuel. She's a projector too, and she needs that fuel. And I said to her, you want to start doing readings? Okay, well, you know, get yourself a little business card and put it on the corner of the table. Do something that says, hi, ask me a question about what I do, you know? So she's going to try that this week. Um, also, if you want to, uh, I think Dan, it was, what was the question? Who did it come from? Was it? A, it was Daniela. Ah, Daniela. Uh, Daniela. Yeah, if you want to do something, I invite you to just put it all out there. Get around other projectors, teach each other to invite you. That's something I do. It's like, hey, you guys, we're not going to get a ton of invitations. So we have to help each other. So if we know other projectors that have brilliant skills, we want to invite them. As I work with generators and manifesting generators, and as I meet them, I teach them about human design and I teach them about my design and what lights me up. And hey, you like something I'm doing? Ask me about it. I teach them how to relate to me, how to draw me out. And I teach them about themselves. And what I can do to help them. And sure, it might stick somewhere in their head and down the road, they will invite me. You know, so that's what I would say, mm -hmm. just get involved and do what you love and the invitations will come. Just do what you love, throw it out there, mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna die, just yeah. experience it. How does it feel <laughs> to you? And if you don't like it, don't do it again. Mm -hmm. If you love it, just keep doing it. That's true. I think there's getting yourself out there, but then there's also doing it in a way that you enjoy because there are so many ways to do it and so many ways to communicate. Yes, Gloria, jump in. Um, lately, Karen Curry Parker has been stating, possibly it's even a confession, that strategy and authority our training wheels, at some point, those training wheels go. And then you move into what feels good to you, what feels correct to you, what you feel like doing. Maybe you feel like jumping off the cliff to see what happens. You're not being invited to do a lot of different things, but you wanna do them because you're a human being, you're curious, you're here to engage, you're here to experience, you're here to delight in the world, you're here to check things out. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's not gonna stop you. You just, you just keep moving ahead. So in terms of how does this relate to invitations? I am a 71 year old projector. You know, you get to a place in life where you know, the heck with the rules, the heck with the protocols, the heck with what everybody was saying about what you can do and what you can't do. <laughs> I don't that. care anymore. I let my hair down. I'm going to do what I feel like doing, what feels right. If I want to go out and invite somebody to, you know, have a date with me because I like the way they look or the way they sound, then I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait. So what I'm saying is, don't feel boxed in by all of the doctrine 
that we've inherited from fundamental human design. See what works for you because you're energetically different from everybody else. So I say, go for it. Yes, that is that is life that advice is it. from a line it's three just... and echoed by another line three. P-H-U-K-I-T, go out and do it and see how it feels. And the real theme is, does it feel good? Does it feel good? If it feels good, keep going. If it doesn't feel good, give it, try something else. But the, the one thing also, because I, I do see a lot of the, oh, I, I can't do this, I can't do that, I haven't been invited to post on Facebook. But first of all, when it comes to social media and it comes to getting the word out, I mean, you are your business, your platform, social media is an extension of you. That's how you showcase your wisdom, your brilliance, what you can share, your expertise that gives you the platform to be invited. So that's number one. So don't let, you know, the, I haven't been invited to post, you know, this week on Instagram. That's not what this is. Go do it. Invitations are for the big things. And this is how I like to describe them. And um, if uh, any of you have uh, extras, please jump them in. I call them the big five. Something that involves your time, your energy, your money, a location decision, a relationship decision. And as Gloria mentioned, Communicating with somebody on match, that's not really, you don't necessarily have to sit back for the invitation. But if you want to meet somebody and you like them, and then the relation to go, relationship to go a little deeper, that may be the grounds for the invitation and see how that feels. Would you agree, Gloria? That's kind of sort of your distinction. Well, if, if you're dating somebody and they're not inviting you to take this relationship further, there ain't nothing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So invitation's not there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a dance, for sure, for sure. Uh, just some quick comments because there's basically more questions and more stuff and I want to definitely address them. So uh, Tammy, you wanted to say something and Brigitte, I think you wanted to say something. Okay, Tammy. Well, I just wanted to say, you know, like Gloria said, you know, you 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 start with human design and you put yourself in some boxes, and I'm this and I'm that. This is how I work. And that's how I work. Until you begin to understand your embodied wisdom, and until you start connecting to who you truly are, you get to transcend the chart. And I, and that's a little bit scary for people. And I know a lot of people aren't there yet. But at some point. You know, you get to learn how you are through all the nuances, through all the gates, through all the channels, through all the profiles, through all, because you are all of it. You are all of it. So the more that you dive into who you are, the more that you get to experiment and play with all aspects of the chart. Yeah, and I wanted to add that it's taken me time to dive into all the extras of human design. I'm still at type and strategy most of the time in authority. I'm like, oh, was I invited to that? I'm always re-engineering things and checking and checking and checking and checking. Am I still invited? For me, that is important. Sometimes I have to re-check. But the one thing I wanted to say is staying with the basics is really important, number one. And secondly, this is the real world. So we have to like Tammy said, transcend the chart and think about human design in the real world. What does that look like? What are my specific questions? How does it look for me? I got to go out there and try it and see how it feels for me, me, the unique projector. And I, you can't transcend the chart until you have the basics, until you have the fundamentals. And that is really knowing who you are, what you're about, what your interests are, where you're supposed to be hanging out, what you're supposed to be doing. Once you've got that down, mm -hmm. then you can work with that and you can go out there and just kind of extrapolate on it. And I'm getting up. Ooh, 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 ooh. I want to respond. Yes. So, yes. 100% Gloria and um, apology for my monkey sounds that that's my sacral and um, but yes so one thing Ross said was it all comes down to strategy and authority and the more that I experienced design my human design and I did put in the chat human design is not a box it is uh, in fact what did I say sorry here I can't even remember I was going so fast 
Human design is not a box. It's a permission slip to be yourself and follow what feels good. And the big key is follow what feels good, even if it contradicts the mental constructs that society has created of this is right, this is wrong, this is success, this is failure, blah, 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 right? That's not success for one person isn't success for another. So, and I mean, that's a whole other conversation. But the more, the more time goes by and the more I'm experimenting and really deepening the understanding about human design and the lessons, the more I realized that he was, Ra was correct in that piece of advice for my experience, strategy and authority. And I think that people think, oh, I need to dig deeper into my gates and my lines and my channels. And my blah, blah, blah. It's brain candy. It's <laughs> fun. It's interesting. It's you learn about yourself. We right. And as a line one, trust me, me loves the brain candy. But once again, we're not about the lines today. However, the real magic is your strategy and your authority. And that's where you really get, I find green light, red light, green light, red light, yellow light. Okay, sit on that for a while. Green light, green light, red light, green light, yellow light, green light. That's basically, and, and it's so simple. I think sometimes it's not simple in the sense of there's so, much, so many nuances. And as individuals, obviously it's gonna show up a little differently, but the principle of it is so simple. I think people are like, that's too simple. This is life. It needs to be more complicated. And I think that's kind of the trap that we've all fallen into <laughs> of it has to be overwhelming and complicated and nah, right? I don't know. I'm just going off on a tangent. I am feeding off all yet projectors. And <laughs> you, you know, I, I have to say that listening to you talk about green light, Red light, green light, red light. What you know what that sounds to me? It sounds mm -hmm. to me like a sacral response. It sounds okay. like you define sacral talking, you know, where if you're really, if you've really worked with this sacral and you're in tune with it, it becomes really clear to identify where the red, red lights are mm -hmm. and the green lights are. I appreciate what you said because it is absolutely relevant to define sacrals. I don't know that it completely translates into uh what how how projectors mm -hmm. respond to situations in their lives or to invitations absolutely love it yeah and i totally want you guys to go deeper in that because we do and we haven't mm -hmm. even touched on authority um but i would you know i i just love to go to the depth uh of that for projectors because this really is about you guys i think bridget was going to say something about that yes yeah, I just wanted to add um, to what both of you said uh, with regard to Marla's recognizing that your sacral is on fire right now and the way that you like the red light, green light. I love that. I'm going to steal that. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> I love it to help my generators. Yeah. Um, but what kept coming up for me as I was listening to you is trust and the learning of human design and the basics and the practice and the experimenting and the experiencing over time, you build a sense of trusting yourself. Wow. I am getting better and better and better at knowing what works for me, what's best for me, what relationships, and it sneaks up on you. But when you do stop and think about it, you're like, Oh my goodness, a year ago, I was like this. And this year I am like, I know what invitations work. I know what people I like. I feel them and I, and I sense it faster than I ever did. So if, I'm just thinking of my own experience is that my open solar plexus and my, my recognition radar is like, yeah, I want to do that. Like when you asked me to come on, I was like, yes. And then of course I went into, oh, I don't know. But in the moment, it really spoke to me. And I, I have learned to trust that. I know the thing is coming <laughs> down the road, that mood's coming. But I know now over time that I can trust that system that, that flows through me each time. So I did want to say that, that 
right now it may seem for some people like, oh, it's just very, I have to think it's, I got to think. And it's like, yeah, probably you do a little bit and you're nervous and you're scared. But over time, the more you do it, the more you experiment, you will grow to trust yourself. And that's what's all this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Can I say something about the spleen as well? And this is coming back to what uh, Brenda Lee said about the about the spleen <clears throat> like uh, when we're splenic you know we talk about it's in the now right we, we have that in that instant hit however we have to really be mindful of ourselves of the conditioning in our spleen because we could be saying hell yes to something that gets us out of survival mode right we can say hell yes that gets that that gets us out of fear and it's really connecting to what that help, what what that splenic is really connecting you to? Is it um, and taking the time to know whether or not you're doing this to get out of fear, to get out of survival, or if this is an intuitive, because the the spleen is really connected to your inner wisdom, your inner guidance, and really not allowing that fear and 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 all the all the survival instincts to take over your splenic response.